It's locked, all right. It's locked. Cannot enter.
So this is where she lives. What a splendid house. Dr. Reed, welcome. How are you? As good as one can be, considering the circumstances. Yes. Death and affliction seem prevailing themes of late. Please, come in. We have much to discuss. I hope I have... On you visiting me tonight. How strange, this painting. Beautiful, melancholic, yet with a haunting dignity. Indeed. A long time ago, a friend asked me to paint this for him, but I kept it in the end. I did not know you were a painter, my lady. There are many things you do not know about me, young Ekon. Why do you continue to mock me? Please excuse my behavior, Jonathan. I tend to tease my friends when uneasy. What is bothering you, my lady? Your letter was quite alarming. We will talk about this in a few minutes. For now, I would like you to tell me about yourself. How have you been since we last met, my friend? I think I should ask the questions, your ladyship. After all, it was you who invited me to settle this most urgent of matters. Fair enough, Jonathan. The situation is critical. We do not have the luxury for etiquette. Please do not misunderstand me. I would be delighted to discuss mundane matters and idle trivialities. If we survive the dark nights to come, we shall have all the time in the world to speak, you and I. For now, please follow me, Jonathan. I must say, your house is exquisite. One of the advantages of living forever is having the time to be selective with one's furnishings. I took the liberty of having tea served. You can still drink tea. Can't keep it down, but I do so enjoy the aroma. Let us toast to make believe. And of course, to your health, Jonathan. And to yours, my lady. Please, call me Elizabeth. So, my lady. Why, truly, did you invite me here? I've been asked to deliver an official invitation to meet the Ascalon Club. They have done nothing but impede my investigations since I became known to them. Why would they want to see me now? I guess they now see you as Ascalon material. They must have found out what happened to your sister. Proof of the potent blood flowing through your veins. I'm not sure I can accept their invitation. I have seen their handiwork. How Fergal the Beast imposed. Even I would not openly defy Lord Redgrave. 
the chairman of the Ascalon Club. If you are convinced I must meet him, I will heed your advice. Thank you, Jonathan. I understand your reluctance to brush shoulders with London's vampire elite. But we have no choice. Is the situation that critical? Yes. The Guard of Prewen has called for a second great hunt of our kind. And they will stop at nothing to eliminate us. You should flee then. Leave London, the country even. I have seen the Guard in action. They are merciless. Your concern warms my heart, Jonathan. But fear not. If the situation gets too dangerous, I shall retreat to my secret Scottish manor. I could hide you in my luggage, if you wish. Thank you for the offer. I shall keep it in mind, but I have much to do here. There is a question I must ask you. Could Lord Redgrave be my maker? I doubt it. If Lord Redgrave had made you his progeny, he would not have seemed so surprised when you demonstrated the strength of your lineage. One day soon, I will have to find the answer to this mystery. And I shall help you in your research, I promise. For now, you must go to the Ascalon Club and play their game. Will I see you again at the Pembroke Hospital? No, you will find me here if you need me. I shall conduct inquiries alone, and we can then share our discoveries. As soon as you meet Lord Redgrave, I suppose. Fear not, my dear. I shall only be a heart's beat away. Will you not visit Pembroke again? No. I must remain discreet and avoid attracting attention to Pembroke Hospital for the time being. But how will you sustain yourself? I shall not, Jonathan. Fear not. I'm used to it. I want to thank you for all your support and your help. Could you do me a last great favor and call me Elizabeth? I should be honored, my lady. Then it is settled. Finally, some good news in these dark hours. Thank you. I had best prepare myself to meet this Lord Redgrave now. How thrilling to meet the Earl of Bristol in the flesh, so to speak. Something tells me you're not very keen on the man. Don't get me wrong. The gentlemen of the Ascalon Club are honorable, but their attitude and opinions are somewhat antiquated. I see. As long as they deny access to female applicants, I will leave them to their antediluvian considerations as to the natural order of things. Jonathan, promise me you'll be careful. Of course. But why the fear in your voice? Look at me, Jonathan. I am. I mean, really look at me, young Ekon. We may be deceptive by nature, but this heart of mine has always told the truth. Oh. Elizabeth.
So, time to visit the Ascalon Club. Locked, all right. It's locked. It's locked, all right. That was the vampire I saw earlier. This war takes no prisoners. The Ascalon Club, the heart of British Vampire Society. Not quite as subtle as I expected. Good evening, miss. Oh my god, no. Please, Mr. Vampire, don't kill me. Please, no. I'm too young to die. I still have so much to offer this world. Wait, no. Why do you think I would... What? Don't 
worry, Dr. Reed. I know you wouldn't harm me. Mother told me you were in this part of town and might drop by. Your mother? My name is Charlotte, sir. Charlotte Ashbury. My mother taught me long ago how to recognize the signs that betray a vampire. I understand she also taught you how to tease and gently mock innocent young Ekons. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Charlotte. What are you doing out here? You mean, what do I do outside at night, since I am a woman? Let me ask you a question, sir. Would you ask the same question of a man? Actually, yes. I ask the same question to everyone who dares to go outside at night, considering the risks. Well, if you must know, I campaign for the right to vote for all women. Why should I wait to the age of 30 years when men can vote at 21? How are the locals reacting to your claims? People here can't wait for a wall to be built to isolate the West End from the rest of town. That's how progressive they are. If this happens, Emily and I will blow it up. Explosives are very dangerous, young lady. And who is this Emily? She is my best friend, and a suffragette too. She was supposed to campaign with me tonight, but hasn't turned up. Have you any reason to be worried about her? Recently, Emily started to believe in well, she got interested in vampires. I'm afraid she might be in trouble. Let me guess. You spoke to her about us, didn't you? Despite your mother's warning, I think I should try to find your friend. Oh, that would be top-notch. I can tell you where she might have gone. You have my thanks, Dr. Reed. And please, don't tell my mother. Are you a suffragette, then? Oh, you really are, Elizabeth's girl. Without a doubt. All adult women have the right to vote in the US, in New Zealand, and in Australia. But women here can't vote unless they are property owners. No need to convince me, Miss Charlotte. I have shared your opinion for a long time, even before I met Emmeline Pankhurst. Really? Oh, now I see why my mother appreciates you so much. Too bad there aren't more men like you in the vicinity. What do you think about this part of town? I was raised here, and I suppose it feels like home. You grew up in this part of town too, did you not? Is there something that's bothering you? Too much selfishness and individualism for my taste. Even when there was no epidemic. Even if that's partly true. May I remind you that many charitable institutions are financed by the selfish and filthy rich. I suppose you're right. But society must reform and renew itself or we are all done for. Yes, I was born a few streets away. A small world, is it not? Did you ever imagine that my mother was your neighbor all that time? That you could have met her in a dark alley at night? You won't trick me twice, young lady. We both know Lady Ashbury never hunts or attacks prey at random. Come on, Doctor. Don't tell me you never thought about that possibility. Her fangs on your neck. Oh. Tell me about your adoption. What do you want to know? How did you meet Lady Ashbury? First, I was an orphan in the institution for girls she manages in the West End. When I was ten, she adopted me and I have lived with her ever since. Did you know she was a vampire when she picked you? The correct word is Ekon, Doctor. And no, I had no idea why my mother only showed up at night. She told me everything when I turned 16, though I suspected the truth for a long time before that. Who are your real parents? Elizabeth Ashbury is my real mother. She raised me and has taken care of me all my life. I have no idea who my progenitors are or were. Do you live with her? I still spend a lot of time in my mother's mansion, but I have my own house now. I have a life to live, you see? 
And one day, I'll have my death to face. What exactly has your mother told you about me? Your name and profession, obviously. And the mystery about your maker. I'm sorry to hear about what happened to your sister, sir. Mother says it was not your fault. Does it not scare you to know what I am? What your mother is? Why should it? My mother is the most compassionate woman. Must I be wary of her, Dr. Reed? Or you? Perhaps it's wise for a mortal never to totally trust a vampire. Your mother herself told me that we Ekon are creatures of deception. Maybe it's because we seem so... alive. That may be true for a naive girl, but I have the best teacher when it comes to getting rid of an insistent immortal. Your mother is not like any other vampire I've met. I believe she thinks the same about you, Dr. Reed. Do you know why Lady Asprey chose you to become her daughter? No, I don't. Each time I ask her that question, she smiles and says it's precisely because I dare to ask such questions. Do you ever regret that she chose you? Of course not. Though I often wonder if she adopted others before me. If so, where are they buried? How was it for them to pass through life with a never-aging mother? Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. Do you know where you are standing right now? In front of the Ascalon Club, I presume. The Ascalon Club only summons or ostracizes. What is your business tonight? I received an invitation. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. Please proceed. Lord Redgrave is waiting on you upstairs. There has been quite a battle here. I'm sure the Ascalon Club has the money to replace the furniture. It's locked. It's locked, all right.
Good evening. We repel the inhumans for now. My good friends, if I may have your attention. Behold our visitor, the good Dr. Reed. Newborn of blood so pure and strong that even my friend Fergal Bansher was no match for him. Here, here, here! Come forward, young Ekon, for we have so much to discuss. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. I am Lord Redgrave, Earl of Bristol and Chairman of this exclusive association. Lord Redgrave. At last we meet. I have been eager to make your acquaintance. I have heard some astounding things about you. Please accept my condolences for your loss, Dr. Reed. Thank you, my lord. Lady Ashbury expressed your wish to meet me. Yes. The lady has always been a useful acquaintance, though not always reliable. Is she a good friend of yours? She has proved to be helpful on many occasions. Hmm. The centuries have taught me never to trust a woman completely, especially if she is immortal. Too prone to emotions, if you ask me. Too fickle when it comes to important decisions. My lord, do not expect me to speak ill of Lady Ashbury. Of course not, and I praise your loyalty. Would you offer the same fidelity to the Empire? What do you mean? I speak of the Skull Plague that threatens London and the country. You have been on the front line in the East End, but the time has come to open up a second front here. The epidemic has escaped the quarantine. You have new cases of the outbreak. We don't know for certain, but we cannot allow the disease to threaten the prominent heads of Great Britain. Why are you suddenly so fond of yours? He tried to kill me. Are you referring to Fergal? He was the most useful of servants, but he was just a servant. You, on the other hand, Doctor, proved yourself much more worthy. You want me to find possible sources of the outbreak in the West End? Is that it? Ah, straight to the point, like all eager newborns. We shall have time to talk about all this, Doctor Reed. But first, I should like to get to know you better. Talk? Is that the only reason you asked me here? Well, no. I also wanted to meet the intriguing Ekon who made such a powerful progeny of his sister. You have not learned the name of your maker, am I correct? It's of no concern of yours. Have no embarrassment, Dr. Reed. We all make mistakes. But whatever your lineage, you are definitely Ascalon material. What do you mean? I would like you to become a member of the Ascalon Club, and to serve me as such. Before I accept, I have so many questions. Please ask. I killed Fergal, who claimed to be one of yours, sent to cleanse the East End of all Skulls. Will his death be an issue? Do not worry. My priorities have changed. Fergal was a zealous servant of mine, but like any servant, he had his limitations and is readily replaced if necessary. What does it mean? to be a member of the Ascalon Club. It means that you swear to protect the interests of the Crown, that you become a loyal servant of the British Empire. Am I supposed to follow orders? As founder and chairman of the club, I alone am entitled to make demands of our members. And I do appreciate obedience. 
Do you have any official recognition from the government? A charter from His Majesty the King? No. Of course, the Ascalon Club publicly supports the Empire. Aims a secret. What is the Ascalon Club's express purpose? We follow the credo of William Marshall, the greatest knight who ever lived. As was he, we are sworn to protect the British Empire. What does Ascalon mean? Ascalon was the lance wielded by St. George, glorious patron saint of England when he slew the dragon. And like that lance, we pierce the hearts of all our nation's enemies. William Marshall founded the Ascalon Club. Not exactly. William Marshall granted me immortality, and I founded the club a few years later. The good knight has been gone for so long. I agree to join the club. This is good news. Good news indeed in these crucial times. Let's inform the assembly formally and proceed with your initiation. My initiation? Fear not. Nothing fancy nor dangerous. It is just that we, the members of Ascalon, believe that tradition and custom are the backbone of this country. My fellow members, dear friends, Please gather and welcome this Ekon as one of our own. Is he worthy? Is his blood pure? pure? Well, speak, Dr. Reed, in front of the most sacred blood. The blood of our beloved William Marshall. Speak now. Will you serve and protect the crown as he did? Yes, I will. Then, young Ekon, it is time to testify with your blood. It is time to sign the Book of Allegiance. I know it's awfully gothic and a tad pedantic, but England's traditions are the backbone of our nation. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. Take your place among the bearers of the lance. One of us! One of us! That went well, did it not? It is always useful to bolster the troops' morale, especially before a difficult battle. You have the makings of a general, my lord. I was. Though very long ago, well, not quite a general, but a proud defender of the crown. So why did you really want to meet me? Straight to the point again, young Ekon. All right, let's talk, you and I, Lance Sparrow. I'm listening, my lord. According to my spies, you have worked with Dr. Edgar Swansea on the epidemic, and your findings were quite alarming. Yes, I'm convinced the recent invasion of frenzied scowls in London is directly linked to the epidemic. This is not the Spanish flu, but something else. I would be glad to hear more of your discoveries, Dr. Reed, but for now, my main concern is the security of London's inhabitants, both mortal and immortal. What do you mean? Alarmed by the epidemic, the guard of Prewen has started a war against us British vampires. To appease the situation, we must eradicate the Skulls. Skulls are hostile vectors of contagion, that is a fact. But first and foremost, they are victims. I agree, Dr. Reed. Most of the new Skulls who roam the streets at night used to be good British citizens. But they must be put down nevertheless. So, what do you want me to do? I want you to investigate the city thoroughly. 
I have reason to fear there are cases of contagion in this part of town. Our absolute priority is to find and cleanse them. And how would you like me to proceed? By all means necessary, Dr. Reed. You are now a member of the Ascalon Club and you have carte blanche. Interrogate the locals, follow all the leads you find, and get results. All he wants, but I won't bot, but I won't... How's your investigation going, Dr. Reed? Time is our enemy. I have a few questions for your lordship. All right, but be quick. May I ask you about the mortal who attended my initiation? Mr. Aloysius Dawson. A member of the club does not normally ask questions about other members. We trust each other mutually. But Mr. Dawson is mortal. Are you not afraid he might reveal who you are? Especially to your enemies. Aloysius Dawson is a man of his word, as are all of us. This is the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. We do not grant access to the unworthy. So he really is a member, then? Indeed. Only the most eminent members are allowed to attend such ceremonies. Even if I admit some of us fled during the first hours of the Great Hunt. You made me swear on the blood of William Marshall during my initiation ceremony. Why was that? William Marshall was the most glorious knight who ever lived. He served five kings and was a living example of probity for all. And he was my maker. Why is his blood so sacred to the Ascalon Club? He was simply the greatest defender of the realm we have ever known. I fought by his side at the Battle of Preston, and he made me his progeny following the fight. William Marshall was a vampire. Is this some sort of joke? Wait. Could he be my maker? That would be joyful news, for it would mean he still walks among us. But alas, the great knight has left this world for good. What can you tell me about the Great Hunt? It's a major concern, and I'm convinced we'll only get a satisfactory conclusion by putting an end to the epidemic. I have already met Geoffrey McCullum. I am certain he will persist until he has killed every last vampire. The Guard's current successful recruitment campaign is driven by the ravenous behavior of the Skulls. I see. So without the epidemic creating Skulls, the Guard could not convince anybody of our presence. Exactly. Once we have put the epidemic behind us, we need only wait until the Guard grows old and weak. Time will once again become our ally. What about the risk of a full-scale attack here? Geoffrey McCullum is a daring leader. That is exactly why so many of our number have left the country until things improve. But not me. I founded this club. I'll die defending it. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Godspeed, Dr. Reed. We are counting on you. I know we're facing a crisis, but I'm shocked no one took the time to clean up the mess inside the club since we were attacked. I must admit the Guard of Prewen impressed me. They must have spent years preparing. Good evening, Dr. Reed. How does it feel to be this evening's centerpiece? Figuratively. I feel perfectly fine. Do I have cause for concern? Do not be alarmed. The Ascalon Club has a tried and tested policy for choosing its initiates. May I ask who you are, sir? Why would you be interested? Well, as you seem to be the only man in the room with a beating heart, you draw quite a bit of attention yourself. Ah, vampire senses never cease to fascinate me. They dwarf those of mere mortals. I am Aloysius Dawson, by the way. Mr. Dawson? Of Dawson and Dawson? The wealthiest man in England? It is a pleasure to meet such a prominent figure of London. A withering London figurehead, to be precise. Are you sick, Mr. Dawson? I am a doctor, you know. My case is beyond the scope of traditional medicine. 
I have spent fortunes on the world's most competent doctors to arrive at that diagnostic conclusion. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Should I suppose that you're here in search of some form of immortality? Absolutely not. I'm here to implement my plan to save the city I was born in. To cast out the ghastly evil that has us all on our knees. Money cannot solve every problem. This mysterious epidemic is going to require more than money can buy. You're right. Money is nothing unless one has the will to wield it. I have a plan, sir. A radical one that will save all that is essential in London. What is your plan, then? Quarantine and barricades are futile. What we need is a wall. A formidable, unscalable wall to isolate the deserving from the infected masses. Complete isolation has proven effective throughout history. But the death toll has always been a high one. I am glad you understand the concept of necessary sacrifice. Are you not mistaking sacrifice for summary execution? Why do you care? Are you not a vampire? Removed from all mortal concerns? Decisiveness is what the city needs, and it needs it now. I'm sure you have more important things to do than talking with an old man like myself. Lord Redgrave is outside almost every night coordinating our defenses. Such an example. Yes, Lance Bearer? Lord Redgrave can play with the brave all he wants. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Godspeed, Dr. Reed. We are counting on you. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Doctor.